Hello, Randy Rain here, and I've got the most rootness, tootness, doggone shootness game west of the Pecos Tin Can Alley. Yeah, that's my impression as a Texan doing a non-Texan who's doing an impression of a Texan. Very complicated character. Thank you. Anyway, I got the Tyco Tin Can Alley. Now, this is very interesting because originally this came out in 1976, put out by Ideal, and it had a rifle instead of a pistol, and it had Chuck Connors on the box. Now, it kind of makes sense because Tyco bought Ideal, but on the back of the actual log here, it says Playtime Products, which I have several robots that are from Playtime Products. They were also bought by Tyco, but after Tyco bought Ideal. So Tyco bought Ideal in like 1989. Then they bought Playtime Products in 1991. So how did Playtime Products get on the back of this? That's the confusing part to me. I don't know. Also, the box says 1994 and this says 1992. So I'm not sure when this thing actually came out, who put it out first after Ideals. But anyway, the game really hasn't changed except for the gun. The original was a rifle and this one is a pistol. And it's odd that, you know, on the box it shows a black pistol, you know, with the blazing orange tip. Up here it shows a silver pistol with that blazing orange tip. And what you get is just a blazing orange gun. Now, however, I do kind of like the cans. I just don't like this gun, and I'm gonna be doing something about that. This thing doesn't work. The battery terminal is corroded, and so I have no idea how much it actually doesn't work. So anyway, I'm gonna get this thing working and make this gun look a lot better. The way it's actually pretty simple is that it moves so it starts here you're going to shoot this first one and when you do it's going to cause it to advance and as it does it pops it and it's popping it by just pulling it down with this these ramps here so it's like a spring it pulls it down and then when it gets past here it shoots so you would go to each one in a row and then when you finally get to the end this resets it. So I think I'm going to start off by taking this section of the track off here. I don't know what that is though. I was wondering where the teeth were. And there's the teeth. Oh, yeah. Okay. Aha! Uh -huh. That's what I'm looking for. You won't ever have to worry about any of those gears splitting. Those are some heavy duty gears. Let's see what this thing does. Pulls that back. Disengages that one. And now it's locked on. Pushing up there. And that gets turned off. Ah. So that's a switch. Here's the thing for the ramp. It's catching this. And then when it gets past. Here's the eye sensor. Let's go in this way though. There's the chip if anybody's interested. This thing looks very well made. I got a kill switch here, I guess. I don't know. It's a photo resistor. That's it. Nothing special. Uh-oh. We got corrosion. And this wire broke off. I'm pretty sure it broke off from there. Mm. 
And that wire that broke is, is what's connected to the ground there. Let's take this off. Look, I even have some white wire. This one's about to break. That was it. Weird. So the answer, what was wrong, wasn't accepting, is because of the cold solder right there. And over time, it had lost conductivity. Alright, one more time. Turning it on. Okay, one more test. Okay, I should be able to shoot. I believe that works. I'm going to see how much I can oil this motor. I like it.
there is an issue and the sensor is not lining up. Go ahead and pull this all the way down. Turn it on. Goes to it stops. And if you look, I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> okay, the light keeps setting it off. Okay, so let's look, it should be for this one right here. So I'm going to turn it off so it doesn't move. And the sensor is about right here. It needs to be moved, it should be moved at least to right there. But that triggers it to move. Okay, turn it off. And it's about right here. And it has to do with this switch here. So, if I'm thinking correctly, this maybe should be bit down some more. And then this should be bent up some more. Yeah, it's missing something. Okay, so I'm going to turn it on. Okay. It's not where it should go. And there's something locking, and I think it's the thing that flicks this. Because I can't find anything else. It must be where it finally goes flat here. Because if I push it just a little bit. Let's see. right there. It's like locked into a place and it's dead center. Just seems all kinds of wrong. Too bad. And not too bad. I think I just need the little tweaks, maybe a little flatten this out. dead on right there. Okay, so this gun and its terrible little light, unless you stick it right up on this thing, it doesn't activate it. I got my Tomy gun out that's way better that, you know, you can actually adjust the light and focus it and aim it. That one I can get it to work across the room. But now we're close with this little cheap orange gun. See, up close, it puts out a decent light. But then you just get back five feet or so, it's already too dim and too big. So I pulled out my Tomy light gun, which actually does shoot out here. And you cock it, and this one, you can... This one you can actually adjust and aim. And this one will shoot out the cans no problem all the way across the room. You can see the difference in the lights. And so full disclosure, I've already opened this up and I wish I hadn't, but I did put it back exactly like I found it. And I'll show you what the problem is, I think. And when you get to here, it's like there's ooh, two screws right next to each other. Yeah, skip this one. Don't pull this off. You need to flip it over and take this side off. And what will happen is 
this thing falls out and you wonder what in the world is just this piece of cardboard stuck in there for. And then you open it up. Now this right here is exactly how I found it. And that screw that I didn't take out is right here. And I don't know what that is for, but I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be here, there. And that screw adjusts this thing only left and right, not up and down. But yeah, that was here. And I figured out the cardboard from this little dimple right here. So I looked all over and only one place matches that. And that's right there. And that is right above the speaker. So I guess that's just to keep it from rattling. I don't know. You probably can't see it, but the blue does give it a nice kind of, you know, gunmetal bluing. paint this brown with just some little testers enamel paint so there it is tin can alley from Tyco 1994 but for some reason it says playtime on the back of it even though Ideal was the one who made this and was bought by Tyco before Playtime. No idea, but here's the gun. It looks pretty good. There's some flashing of orange in some places, but still it looks pretty good. It does work better, but it still doesn't work great. There's no way. It says 15 feet. No way. But it does work better, and I don't know why it was like that, and I don't know why this had been played with if it was like this. Tons of questions, but anyway, let's have a look at it. Let me shoot it up. So hey, if you like this video, I sure would appreciate a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, of course, subscribe. I'd like to thank these people here. These are patrons. These are people helping me out. These are people bringing you this stuff. And I thank them oh so very, very much because I couldn't do any of this stuff without them. That is for sure. There wouldn't be any of this. So thank them for bringing you the Tin Can Alley from 1994. And thanks especially for my friend Matt who bought it for me. Anyway, thanks for watching.